Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to Stately Fawn Manor. And today I am here with a simple statement which leads to a simple question. My simple statement is this. It is a fact. You can't read audiobooks. You can't. You can't read them. You can only listen to them. Audiobooks are other people reading, and you listen to those people reading that book. You can't read them. It's entirely different. It's an entirely different process than reading. You know, ears, eyes, different. So it's a different thing, listening to an audiobook. So that is my statement. It is a fact, scientifically proven. But this leads me to this question. The question is, so is this difference significant? I mean, should we care? Is there, is there some reason it matters that it's different? I was thinking about this, and I'll tell you why in a minute, but here's the thing with audiobooks. I can't really think of anything bad to say about audiobooks. And I know there are people out there with negative opinions about audiobooks. And for the life of me, I can't figure out why? Because everything I could think of with an audiobook is a benefit. You know, they are good things. I am very grateful that they exist for a lot of reasons. And they're very popular. And I'm very happy that they're very popular because that means more books are available in the audio format. So here's the thing with a book. Let's talk about what a book is, at least what I think a book is. A book, well, you know, there's the physical book. This is Talendor's Guest by Charles McGarry. This is a physical book, a book. But when we talk about books, we're not usually talking about the physical object. Usually, we're talking about what's in the book, which is a, is, a book is worth, it's words composed into a story or it's words comp composed to give you information or maybe it's words composed into a poem or a series of poems. But it's words composed to tell you something. That's all the book is. It doesn't matter the format. What matters are the words and the way those words are put together. And if you've got an unabridged audiobook, the words are going to be the same whether you read them or whether you listen to them. And I know that there's a difference. It's a very different experience listening to an audiobook uh, from reading an audiobook. I, I understand that. But think of the benefits First of all, there, there are a ton of benefits, and there's, there are a lot of reasons why I'm glad audiobooks are as popular as they are. First of all, we can go right to how it makes these books accessible to people who otherwise could not read them. Now, sometimes this could be due to blindness or other vision issues. Other times, it could be other physical challenges that people might have. There are a lot of people that cannot physically read a book. There are people that cannot hold a book. There are people with other challenges uh, that make it impossible for, the, for them to read a physical book. I used to work with somebody who was in that position, and let me tell you, audiobooks vastly improved her life. The fact that they were available was wonderful. And so just for that reason alone, I think audio audiobooks are great. But of course, they're also for everybody. They're for, for long-haul truckers. I used to be a truck driver a long time ago. A long time ago, I was a truck driver. But back when I was driving a truck, 
the only way to get an audiobook was like in cassette tapes, in these big boxes of cassette tapes. And that's if you had a cassette player in your truck. And guess what? You're you're not. You you you're not going to have one of those in your truck probably. Especially if you're driving somebody else's truck. But that's, you know, that's a side. Nowadays, thanks to iPhones, pretty much anybody can listen to an audiobook. You know, so if you're driving, you know, 300 miles a day or something or longer, you know, audiobooks are amazing. They, they, will, they will literally change your life. So all of these things are positive. So I, I, I think that the only negatives possibly are how people experience audiobooks. And I do understand this. So audiobooks, it's, a, like I said, a very different experience from reading a book. And I think a lot of people feel like audiobooks would be less immersive. I felt that way. I kind of feel that way. And I have had trouble actually listening to audiobooks. I haven't listened to many. And my problem is that I can't really concentrate on them too well. In that I'll listen, I'll listen, and then something will distract me because I'm easily distracted. And then, you know, I'm in la-la land and my audiobook just keeps talking. Now, this happens when you read a physical book as well, but usually the page doesn't turn on its own. It just sits there so that when you come back from, you know, thinking about whatever the hell you're thinking about, and you're like, oh, I was reading. That's what I was doing. And you look down, the page is still there. You could pretty much find yourself back where you want it to be. But if it's like an audiobook, for me at least, it's like this audiobook just won't shut up. And you're like, hey, what? I missed it. They just keep talking. And so you, it's a little difficult, a little bit more difficult to get back to wherever the hell you were when you, you know, lost concentration. Now, this is not a fault of the audiobook. This is a fault of mine. And I actually watched a video yesterday that was made by Revenant Reads, Vin at Revenant Reads. He was doing a tag. And one of the questions was about audiobooks. And he mentioned that he feels, because he brought this up, my stupid audiobook problem. And he, he said that, you know, it's a skill. Listening to audiobooks is a skill like any other. And it's something you can learn. You can learn how to listen to audiobooks if you concentrate and, you know, practice. You, know, you just have to work at it. Because he has no problem with audiobooks. And they're a great help to him. I've never been that inspired to listen to too many of them. But recently, something made me think about audiobooks again. Uh, you might have seen my book. Books by Booktubers video a few days ago when I talked about Brian Lee Durfee, who, because of a medical condition, is losing his eyesight. Now, he, in his video where he talked about this, brought up that he kind of had a bad premonition that this might happen because of the issues he had in one eye. He was afraid, well, it, it might happen in the other. There's a chance, which, you know, you know, it happened. But knowing that might happen, he started buying all of his favorite books on Audible. And this guy has a lot of books. Brian Lee Durfee, man, he's got so many books. And he, I think he mentioned he got like a thousand, he's gotten a thousand books so far out of the books that he owns. Of course, this is only possible because of the popularity of audiobooks, that so many of his favorite books would even be available as audiobooks. And so he's kind of, over time, been building up an audiobook library so that these books will be accessible to him in the future no matter what happens. And when he put out that video, I was determined, you know what, I've got to get to Brian Lee Durfee's book that he wrote, uh, The Forgetting Moon. I've been meaning to get to that book forever. And 
after this happened, I want to support Brian. So I thought, well, what, how can I support him? Well, I could read his books. Finally, I can get around to that. But at the same time, it's almost September, which is dick Tember, which is, <laughs> which is the month devoted to private detective fiction, detective fiction. And I don't want to miss out on that by reading these giant fantasy novels. And so then I thought about what Brian said in his video, how he's been collecting these audiobooks. And I thought, you know what? Maybe it's time that I give an audiobook a try. And so I bought The Forgetting Moon on audio. Because I figure, what the hell? You know, it's only good for Brian Lee Durfee if I buy an audiobook, as well as having his book on every other format, which I do. So I bought the audiobook. Now, audiobooks, you know, they can be tricky because they kind of can live or die by who was reading the audiobook. You don't have this problem with a physical book that you read. Everything's in your head. There, there's nobody reading the book to you. And the reading of an audiobook, it's a performance. It's not just reading. A good audio book reader is giving you a performance. He's not just reading to you, or she's not just reading to you. F Fortunately, this book has a really, really good narrator. And so I've been listening to it for the past couple days, going to and from work, even though this book is like 30 hours long on audio, so it's gonna take me forever, but that's okay. No time limit here. And it, my drive to work is like 10 minutes, you know. so. Little bits here and there, I've been listening to it, and it's been working out because I've been concentrating. And so I'm thinking, you know what? This might work for me. This might be a way to get to things that I just never get to. You know, maybe I'll finally be able to get to a Brandon Sanderson book. You know, maybe I'll finally be able to get to these other books that I never get to because when my actual time to read, I'm reading other things. So again, this is only a benefit, I think. I can't really think of any bad things, ultimately, about audiobooks, except for when you have somebody reading the book who sucks. This can, I understand, destroy an audiobook, but that doesn't destroy the idea or the existence of audiobooks. Great audiobooks probably make up for bad audiobooks, just like any other format. And so, yeah, I'm on board with audiobooks, I think. I think they're a good thing. And I'm interested in hearing your thoughts on the matter. Is the difference between reading and listening significant? Do you think this is any kind of major difference? Because ultimately, listening to the book and reading the book, the words are the same. I have heard arguments that comprehension isn't as good listening but I've never come across any kind of scientific study that says this. And so I think this is, might be just people talking. And I think if you're concentrating, that's probably not true. You know, you hear things and they could be nonsense. I don't know. Let me know, though, if you hear different or if you know different or if you think different. Let me know what you think about this subject. I'm not sure this is a subject that should be controversial, but I think sometimes it is. And that's confusing in itself. Okay, that's all I have to say for about audiobooks. I will catch you next time.